let's take a look at problem solving in projectile motion. So in the previous video, we saw a couple facts about projectile motion, and I'll summarize them right now. Um, in projectile motion, the only force that's acting is the gravitational force. Also, the acceleration is equal to g. g is the acceleration due to gravity. And on or near the surface of the Earth, g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Uh, the trajectory in projectile motion is a parabola. And in projectile motion, the velocity is tangent to the trajectory. Now, I also said that the key to solving projectile motion problems is to break the problem into a horizontal part and a vertical part, and to solve those two things independently. So in the horizontal direction, we have certain information. In the horizontal direction, we know that the horizontal acceleration, or AX, is equal to zero meters per second squared. We know also, if the horizontal acceleration is zero, then the horizontal velocity is constant. Vertically, we have some different information. Vertically, we know that the acceleration, ay, is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. That's the vertical part of the acceleration. And if it's accelerating vertically, then that means that the vertical velocity, vy, is changing. All right. So that's kind of the background conceptual information that we're going to use to solve problems. Let's put it into practice. Let's say we have this situation. We're going to throw an object horizontally from a cliff. So I'm going to draw a diagram here. Let's make the cliff 20 meters high. There's a person standing there. Uh, the ball is thrown 20 meters above the bottom of the cliff. Uh, and it's thrown horizontally 5 meters per second to the right. So here's the trajectory. And maybe this looks a little different than the projectile motion diagram that I drew before, but it's the same idea. This is still projectile motion, right? After it leaves the person's hand, the only force acting is gravitational force. So this is definitely projectile motion, and this is definitely part of a parabola. So I'm going to ask a couple questions here. First, we're going to find how long does it take to hit the ground? Then we're going to ask what is the vertical velocity when it hits the ground? In other words, what's Vy when it hits the ground? Then what is the horizontal velocity when it hits the ground? In other words, what's Vx? And then the last question we're going to ask is, how fast is it moving when it hits the ground? Now, remember, the key here is to split the problem into horizontal and vertical, and we're going to address each part or each direction independently. And one way you can structure that, one way to keep things straight, is to create this kind of grid. Uh, and I'll show you how I set it up. We have one side for horizontal, one side for vertical, and then I write the suvat variables on each side. So remember, suvat, that's the displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. And first thing we'll do is we'll write down the information we know, right? That's the way that you start addressing a problem. You think about what you know, what you were told in the problem. So in the problem, Let's see, what were we given? Well, this is projectile motion, so we know the acceleration. We know the horizontal acceleration is 0 meters per second squared. We know the vertical acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. So I'm going to write that as negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's see, what else do we know? Well, we know that its initial velocity is 5 meters per second to the right. Well. If that's the initial velocity, well, then the horizontal component of that, horizontal component of that velocity is 5 meters per second. And the vertical component of that, the part of that velocity that's up and down at the beginning, is 0 meters per second. And what other information do we have? Well, we're trying to figure out how long it takes to hit the ground. and So the end point is when it reaches the ground. Well, that means that from the beginning to the end, the vertical displacement, the change in its vertical position, is negative 20 meters, is 20 meters downward. From the beginning to the end, it travels 20 meters downward. That's its vertical displacement. And so we have that information. All right. Well, that's a good start. Um, let's see how we can figure out how long it takes to hit the ground. That's solving for the time that it takes to reach the ground. Well, if you look at the vertical variables, we have vertical displacement, initial vertical velocity, 
vertical acceleration, we're solving for time. There's a kinematic equation that relates all those. And I'm going to write it down. And remember, we're looking at the vertical parts right now. We're only looking at the vertical. You don't mix horizontal and vertical when you're solving these problems. You separate them and you address them differently. So I'm going to use only vertical information in this equation. And to keep that in mind, I'm going to put little y's next to the displacement velocity acceleration. And I'm going to solve the problem. OK, so I'm going to put in the information I know, do the algebra, and I get the time that it takes is 2.02 .02 second. Let's look at the other parts. So vertical velocity when it hits the ground. Well, that's its final vertical velocity. So the final vertical velocity that what I'm solving for here is Vy. So how can I solve for Vy? Well, if I look at the information I have, for Vy, I can use this equation. V squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. I know all of those things in the y direction. So I can put in all the information I have in y and solve. OK, do the algebra. And I get that Vy is equal to plus or minus 19.8 meters per second. Here comes where this is where you have to input your own thinking. And you can't just rely on doing the math anymore. You have to pick whether or not you want the plus or the minus as your answer. Well, let's think about it. When it reaches the ground, does it have a positive or a negative vertical velocity? Well, when it reaches the ground, it is probably moving downward based on our picture. We would pick the negative root. So the vertical velocity when it reaches the ground is 19.8 meters per second downward. Now let's think about the horizontal velocity when it reaches the ground. Well, horizontal velocity is constant. So the horizontal velocity when it reaches the ground is 5 meters per second. No math necessary. OK, and then we want to know how fast it's moving when it reaches the ground. Well, when it reaches the ground, it has a horizontal component and a vertical component. Horizontally, it's moving at 5 meters per second. Vertically, it's moving at 19.8 meters per second downward. So I have to combine those two components into the total velocity. And looking at this picture, the way to find that total velocity is with that Pythagorean theorem. So when it reaches the ground, if I do the math, it's moving at 20.4 meters per second. Now, here I didn't solve for the direction because the problem didn't ask that. The problem only asked how fast. Didn't ask for the velocity. Didn't say what direction is it moving. So I don't have to give the direction for this one. All right, we're going to look at two more examples. This example, let's see, we have this situation. So an object is launched at 20 meters per second at 30 degrees above horizontal. And I want to know, after 1.5 seconds have passed, what's the vertical displacement? What's the horizontal displacement? What's the vertical velocity? And what's the horizontal velocity? So what we'll do is we'll organize the information just like we did before. Let's put the horizontal SUVOT information on one side, the vertical SUVOT equations or SUVOT information on the other side. Let's put what we know. We know the acceleration in X. We know the acceleration in Y. We've been given the amount of time, so let's put the time in there. Now, we don't directly know the initial velocities, but I gave you that the initial velocity is 20 meters per second at 30 degrees above horizontal. I can use that information to find the components of the initial velocity. And I'm going to draw a triangle off to the side like this. So here's the initial velocity, and here are the horizontal and vertical components. So to find the horizontal component, let's see, that's the adjacent side to the angle, so I can use cosine. The initial horizontal component of the velocity is 17.3 meters per second. And for the vertical component, I get the opposite the angle, so I can use sine. If I do that, the initial vertical velocity is 10 meters per second. There we go. OK. Now, first question was, what's the vertical displacement after 1.5 seconds? So that means I'm solving for SY, vertical displacement. Well, let's see. The vertical displacement is S is equal to UT plus 1 half AT squared. I can solve for that. And if I do, put in the numbers. Don't forget, acceleration is downward. Put it in as a negative. The vertical displacement after 1.5 seconds 
is 3.98 meters. Part B, horizontal displacement, same idea, except now I'm only using the horizontal information. So if I do that, do some math, the horizontal displacement is 26 meters. The vertical velocity, after 1.5 seconds, okay, I can use another kinematic equation, v is equal to u plus at. Keeping in mind I'm only using the vertical parts, so okay. The vertical velocity after 1.5 seconds is negative 4.0 or 4.70 meters per second. And then the horizontal velocity, that's not bad. The horizontal velocity, remember, is constant. So the horizontal velocity after 1.5 seconds is 17.3 meters per second. All right. Let's do one more example. Let's say we have an object that's launched from an 80 meter high cliff and it's launched with a horizontal velocity of 15 meters per second. I want to know how long does it take to reach the ground, what's the horizontal displacement when it reaches the ground, what's the horizontal velocity at the ground, and what's the vertical velocity at the ground. So same idea. We're going to organize the information, put the verticals, uh, excuse me, horizontal SUVOT information on one side, vertical SUVOT information on the other side. We know the accelerations we know the initial velocities. This one's a little easier. We don't have to do any trig because the horizontal component of the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. The vertical component of the initial velocity is zero. And we also know the vertical displacement. From beginning to end, it moves 80 meters downward. So the vertical displacement is 80 meters downward or negative 80 meters. So we'll go through it. For part A, if I want to know how long it takes to reach the ground, I'm solving for time. Okay, I can use this kinematic equation. Do the algebra. Time it takes to hit the ground is 4.04 seconds. For part B, hmm, well, for part B, I want to know the horizontal displacement when it reaches the ground. So I'm looking for Sx. Okay, so I can use this kinematic equation because I know the time at this point. And okay, the horizontal displacement when it hits, hits the ground is 60.6 .6 meters. In the diagram, let's make sure we know where that is. That's the horizontal displacement from beginning to end. So that would be drawn as this, 60.6 .6 meters. All right, horizontal velocity at the ground, horizontal velocity is constant. So that was easy, no math necessary, 15 meters per second. And then the vertical velocity at the ground. Well, I can use another kinematic equation. Here we go. Do the math. Vertical velocity when it hits the ground is negative 39.6 meters per second.